Hey everybody, I uh, wanted to spend a little bit of time going over um, what's going to be on the the benchmark coming up. And so what I have, instead of just telling you what's going to be on there, I'm going to work through some sample problems from an old assessment that I have that is going to very closely resemble um, the assessment that you will have coming up. And so I'm assuming that gas laws are something since we're just finishing them up that we don't necessarily need to go over but let's talk about um, let's talk about structure molecular structure and Lewis dot structures and geometry and all that stuff from the beginning okay so here's the type of question notice that there's a bajillion parts to it but that's okay we can still do this so Again, it's not, it may not have the same exact format, but the questions are pretty much like the questions that I'm going to ask. It says, what is the formula of sulfur hexafluoride? Well, that hits the very first thing that we talked about in the mind map, which is naming these compounds or coming up with the formula for these compounds. And so this is sulfur hexafluoride. You may want to just very, very quickly review the prefixes so that you know compounds um, going into this thing. Also, don't forget that there are three common names that you're going to need to know, and that's for this guy, water, this guy, ammonia, and this guy, methane. Okay, and then I say, what is the Lewis dot structure? Okay, now if you need help with Lewis dot structures, definitely go back and look at um, some of the Lewis dot structure videos. Um, I'm just going to very quickly do this. So sulfur has six electrons and fluorine has seven and there's six fluorines. So seven times six is 42 plus six is 48. So we have 48 electrons. Sulfur is the central atom. We do six fluorines around this thing. And then we put the dots. And so sometimes the dots end up looking like lines on my computer, but now we count and we're up to 48. So this is the um, Lewis dot structure. And then it says, do any resonance structures exist? That should be uh, plural. And so the answer is no, okay, and it says explain why not. Remember that a resonance structure, which I think is important for you to review, a resonance structure exists when you have a multiple bond and there is no preference for the multiple bond, typically a double bond, to go between the central atom and the other atom. So you can have something like the carbonate ion which is looks like this but there's also no preference the double bond could be down here as well and I know I'm leaving off the the lone pairs of electrons but the idea is, is that double bond could go anywhere okay well sulfur hexafluoride only has single bonds Resonance structures exist when you have multiple bonds, okay? Double bonds and triple bonds. Okay, so how many electron domains are around the central atom? There are six. How many of them are bonding? There are six. What is the molecular geometry? So remember, molecular geometry is determined by the number of electron domains and the number of bonding domains. And so that's just a list knowing which, um, which thing is which. And so six and six is octahedral so I'm going to take that I'm going to go back down here because I want to scroll this down so we can answer the questions okay so that looks good <laughs> okay let me <laughs> go back here Oh, 
So now we have what is the measure of the bond angles formed in this compound. Now, in this particular semester, we didn't spend a lot of time going over that. But in octahedral, it's 90 degrees. But polarity, we definitely should know. The polarity of the molecule, because it's symmetric, it is nonpolar. Okay. It is nonpolar. And so will the molecule dissolve in water? Well, we did that lab. Remember the supersaturation lab. And we talked about um, why or why not something dissolves in water. In order for something to dissolve in water, it has to have a similar polarity as the water. So water is definitely polar. And then like dissolves like, or like likes like. I say that. Okay, so water is polar, and this molecule is nonpolar. So polar, nonpolar, they don't mix. And so the this would be no. And it has to do with the differences in polarity. Okay, well, another question here. Look, I have more. And it's not always going to be the same questions. Okay. But so here we have this guy. Okay. And you can get an idea of how many different types of questions I can ask. Okay. So this is, um, so this guy, XEF4, it says, what is the name of the compound? Well, Again, we talked about naming xenon tetrafluoride. Keep in mind, UO. What is the Lewis structure? Okay, so xenon is 8, fluorine is 7 times 4, so there are 36 electrons in this guy. We put xenon in the middle, F, 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 and so that's 8, and now we do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, so that's 24 and 8, so we're at 32 electrons used, and so we want 34, 36, and so now how many electron domains are around that central atom? There are definitely still six, but now there's only four bonding domains. There's, let me change colors here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six electron domains, and then one, two, three, four of them have bonds in them, bonding domains. And so the, the geometry is directly related to how many electron domains and how many bonding domains. And the molecular geometry for this is going to be square planar. Okay, we didn't talk about sigma and pi bonds in this case. Um, we didn't talk about sigma and pi bonds um, in this unit, so don't worry about that. Um, and it says how many... Um, does the compound have polar bonds? So remember, okay, the review is that when we're dealing with polar bonds, you want to look at the electronegativity difference. Xenon versus fluorine. And already I know that this bond is polar. Fluorine is the most polar element, or the most electronegative element with an electronegativity of four. Xenon has a much less electronegativity. I think it's somewhere around 1.9 or something. Okay. And so I know that that difference is big enough to consider this to be, to have polar bonds. Okay. The bonds are polar. So now let's get rid of this. We'll scroll down. Now it says um, the next question is. Describe what Vesper theory is. Oh, this is a really good question because Vesper theory stands for valence shell electron pair 
repulsion theory. Okay, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And what that says is that the electrons around a central atom, or around any atom, want to be as far away from each other as possible because electrons repel. And so if you have just three pairs of electrons, they're going to want to be in this sort of shape, this sort of triangular planar shape. Okay, and then four, when you have four electrons, they want to be kind of in the orientation of a tetrahedron, etc., etc. So that is what Vesper theory is. Okay, and we didn't do formal charge in this either. So, um, so there's all sorts of different kinds of questions that I can ask. There's probably even more than this, um, but this gives you a good look at what kind of questions there are. There'll probably be four or five. Um, molecules where you're going to have to do a um, Lewis structure or a name, you're going to have to, um, or a formula, you're going to have to tell me about bonding domains, geometry. Um, the one thing in here that is not mentioned um, that I definitely am going to ask about, and that's intermolecular forces, um, predicting state, okay, is it a solid, liquid, or gas? Well, let's look at this molecule. This is XEF4. This is a nonpolar molecule. So if it is a nonpolar molecule, that means that it has weak intermolecular forces. Has weak intermolecular forces. And so then what state of matter has weak intermolecular forces? It's probably going to be a gas at room temperature. And sure enough, xenon tetrafluoride is a gas. Okay, so those are the types of questions you'll see. Um, so give it a look, and I hope this is a good review for you. See you later.